In now Guy Lewis, former U.S. attorney. He's often along uh, to help us break down these difficult issues. Guy, thank you for being with me today. Um, first of all, how does it happen that the attorney in this, the county attorney, says, well, I could see a way where charges wouldn't be brought forth, and then the statement says, well, we want to take a look at all the evidence because we want all things that help us to be in play. Those seem to be different to me. Great question, Harris, and, and indeed they are different. Um, I think, I, I guess, I think what the county attorney is saying is that, wait a second, let's look at all the evidence. We've got a horrific eight-minute video, now a second video that shows a different perspective, which we didn't have initially, but let's take a moment and let's not just look at the eight minutes where the officer's knee is on the, the man's neck. I mean, if Guy, that's all you, there is... Would you allow me to interject? And I would only do this because there's breaking news now, and our viewers can see it at the bottom of the screen. Team put it up there quickly. Uh, the officer who knelt on George Floyd's neck, Derek Chauvin, has been arrested. Now, to your point, because we're talking about charges, whatever coming up, no charges, evidence, that sort of thing... There's no word yet on any charges being filed against him, but Derek Chauvin has now been arrested. Uh, Guy Lewis, first react to that, and then we'll get back to our previous point of evidence in this case. A absolutely appropriate. Uh, I'm, I'm glad the, they've moved swiftly on this. They being, I, I, I imagine, I haven't seen the charging document, but probably the, uh, the county attorney's office, the state, in terms of charges, uh, and they've, uh, they've charged based on primarily a, a very quick investigation, including the videotape, which I think clearly shows a crime. So uh, I applaud the uh, county attorney's office for moving quickly. Uh, it's Hennepin County. I, I think it's the same county attorney, Mike Freeman, that we were just talking about, who said that, well, wait, there may be some cause for no charges in this case. I feel like the dog is chasing his tail. Make sense of this for me. So here, here's what they've done in a matter of less than 24 hours. Uh, the, uh, the police officers have been fired. They've refused to give statements, uh, and they've uh, 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 exercised their Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. The investigators, along with the FBI and the local police officers, probably the homicide detectives, have interviewed everyone involving, uh, or at least everyone that they can who was present, and then they've looked at the video. But, but again, Harrison, you make a great point. We, we, we see eight minutes of a video. Um, one of these police officers, a gentleman who was just arrested, that you just announced was arrested, has 18 prior complaints of improper yes, police conduct, including, including violence. And so they've looked at that record, and they've made it clear, I, th I think they've come to the conclusion, inescapable conclusion, that the man uh, committed. There's probable cause to believe he committed the offense, and indeed he should, shouldn't have been a police officer, probably should never have been a police officer. Let me ask you this. I, I mean, we've seen recently in the case, separate case, not having anything to do with police departments. Uh, maybe some prosecutors who had conflicts of interest along the way, but we don't even know all of that yet. Ahmed Arbery took north of 70 days to get to the point where there are arrests. The city of Minneapolis, and also St. Paul, set literally ablaze in Minneapolis, the third precinct. They let it burn, had to rescue officers off the roof last night. Third night of this protesting, escalating, escalating violence. This still, to me, it's not 70 plus days, but it still feels like it took some extra time. Did it, or am I, am I putting too, too much on that, that they did it in the appropriate time? Or did this, could this have been faster? The man who's charged ate dinner with his family, we would assume, for three nights in a row. <laughs> How much of the information could we not have known from that video three days ago? Just a question. No, great question. So it, it's pretty, in, in terms of my experience, and especially down here in Miami and working on these kinds of cases, um, it, it's moved fairly quickly. 
Um, but I do okay. think it's, it's, it's appropriate in terms of, of the timetable. Um, the problem is, and my, my worry, really my concern here, Harris, is just uh -huh. charging, just arresting is only half the picture. It doesn't do us any good just to, you know, bring a body in, charge a defendant, and then hope everything works out, and then conduct mm -hmm. all your investigation. The, the real goal here is to convict, is, is to, you're, you're going to have to take this to a jury. You've got 12 people. It's hard to convict on these police officer cases, I promise you. And, and why so I is just that? Hope because we all want to give the benefit of the doubt. I just heard and watched your unbelievable interview uh, prior to me. And for all With the Jack reasons Brewer. that you were talking, yes, yeah. you want to give the police, they, they have impossible jobs. We ask them they to do. do, to be super women and super men. And, and, yes. and then if they make a mistake, we want to hold them accountable. And we just want to make, what we want to make sure here is that this was not a mistake. And I don't, listen, I've looked at the video, it breaks my heart, but the thing I've not seen is what happened an hour before the video and an hour or more that happened after the video. That matters. Those facts matter. Just like an investigative reporter, you know, just like you would do, sure. you'd want to know, you'd be asking those questions. And I just hope they have, and I hope they've got good answers.